In this video, we're going to talk about mode choice, which is either the second or third step in the transportation planning model. So, auto is the mode that eats all other modes, and we can see this in a number of examples without the Pac-Man music. Mode share in Minnesota shows that drive alone mode, people who are in their cars without any passengers, comprise 78% of all work trips. Carpoolers comprise 9% of all work trips. Public transportation comprises 3%, walking comprises 3%, biking about 1.5%, and taxi and motorcycles and other means about 1%. About 5% of people are working at home, according to the most recent Census American Community Survey. The numbers in the Twin Cities metropolitan area, and this is the larger 19-county metropolitan area, are very similar. Within the city of Minneapolis, you see a larger role for what are sometimes called alternative, but certainly non-automobile modes. Automobile drops from to 62% from 78%, while other modes, in particular transit, walking and biking get a much larger mode share than they do for the metropolitan area as a whole or statewide. So, a Pac-Man theory of mode choice that drive alone eats all other modes is probably not a sufficient way of predicting how many people are going to use any particular mode on any given, in any particular day. We might say that it's insufficiently formal. So, what we want to do is predict either at an aggregate or a disaggregate level the number of trips that are being made by each mode. At the aggregate level, we're trying to do this. We're trying to estimate the number of trips from each zone to each other zone by each purpose that take a particular mode. In a disaggregate sense, we're trying to do this for every individual, that every particular trip, what mode are they going to take? Forecasters have been using what are called discrete choice models to predict distinct, what are called discrete or qualitative choices. For instance, bus versus car. This is very different than the regression models we used in trip generation, which tried to predict continuous values, such as the number of trips that were being made. Logit is the most popular version of the mode choice model. The development of the Logit model and the formalization is often attributed to Daniel McFadden, who received his uh, PhD at the University of Minnesota and is now a professor at the University of California at Berkeley. He applied logit mode choice models to predict mode shares for the BART rail system in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that work is cited in his Nobel Prize uh, award. So, to put simply, the logit model is trying to predict the probability P sub IJM, probability of taking mode M between origin I and destination J, as a function of the utility of mode M on the trip between origin I and destination J. More precisely, it's the ratio of the exponentiated utility divided by the sum of the exponentiated utilities. Subject to, the sum of all the probabilities must equal one, so that for any given trip, you are only take, taking one mode. And while we don't know which mode any particular person is taking, the sum of the probabilities of all of the modes must equal one. So what is the utility comprised of? Well, it's a function of all of the usual things we think about in transportation. The cost of travel, the time of travel, attributes of the origin, attributes of the destination, attributes of the trip, attributes of the trip maker. So, if we have a, bin a binomial logit model, where we're assuming the utility of other choices is zero, we can solve this fairly fairly clearly by looking at the utility of a particular mode and use that to predict its mode share. So if we have one mode and all other modes are normalized so that their utility is zero, when the utility of the mode that we're interested in is below zero, that mode's mode share is going to be less than zero, less than 0.5 because its utility is below that of the alternative modes. When it, the utility is above zero, the mode share will be above 0.5 because its utility is greater than that of the other modes. As the utility gets higher and higher, 
the mode share asymptotically approaches one. And as the utility gets more and more negative, the utility, the, the utility tells us that the mode share asymptotically approaches zero. So what affects choice of mode? We discussed some of these things previously. The travel time of the trip, the travel time to access the main mode, so for instance, the travel time to walk to a bus stop or walk to a rail station or walk to your parking lot. The wait time, which depends on the headways of transit vehicles. Is there a bus every hour, every half hour, every 15 minutes? Transfer time, if you have to change vehicles, how long does that take? So these are all time characteristics, but they're not all perceived the same, so they may be weighted differently. The fare, parking costs, tolls. And then we have alternative specific constants, which are basically thumbs on the scale, which says that all other quantitative factors that we can control for being controlled for, maybe people still prefer one mode over another for some other reason. For instance, because you're not driving, so you might weight modes where you don't have to drive greater than modes where you do because you can do other things instead of driving. So after controlling for the cost and times and so on, people might like to ride on a train better than driving a car. We might have other qualitative data describing the environment. Are there sidewalks? Not simply how fast can you walk, but are you walking on dry, clean, smooth sidewalks? When you're waiting at a bus stop, are you waiting in a heated bus shelter? Are you waiting in a bench? Are you standing on a pile of mud? These things affect your preference for the mode. And so for in a what we call a multinomial logit model, where we have a set of modes that we're trying to predict the shares of, we have a flat rather than a nested structure. So we might be trying to predict the number of people who are walking to transit, number of people who are driving to transit and park and ride, the number of people who are being dropped off at transit. So those are WCT, ADT, and APT in the graph. We we're trying to predict the number of people who are driving or how many are driving alone without a passenger, how many are driving with one passenger in the car, how many are driving with two passengers in the car. We might even try to distinguish between people who are driving with two passengers in a car between those who are driving and those who are the passenger. Okay, Similarly for three or more. And how many people are walking, how many people are biking. Now we could have more complex structures or less complex structures. Depends on the data that we have, the amount of time that we have to estimate the model and so on. We can make the structure more complicated by having nests where we, for instance, looked at transit first, and then given that you're taking transit, how are you getting to transit would be the second level of the choice. Or given that you're driving, how many people are you driving with would be the second level of the choice. Those types of things can Im improve the quality of the estimation um, at the cost of some increased computation. And the question is, is that trade-off worthwhile? Now, a property of the logit model is what's called independence of irrelevant alternatives. So if you add a mode to the set of modes that we had before, it will draw from the existing modes in proportion to their existing shares. So similarly, if we were to remove a mode, say we were to cancel bus service because of a bus strike, we would assume that all bus travelers would go to the other modes in proportion to those modes' current mode shares. Now, does that make sense? Different types of models don't necessarily make this assumption. Classic example uh, challenging this is what's called the red bus, blue bus paradox. Imagine you have three modes, driving and blue bus. And each of them gets a certain mode share. And then let's imagine that we introduce a new mode, we call that red bus, which has exactly the same characteristics as the blue bus. So let's say before, Driving and blue, blue bus each had a 50% share. And then we introduce red bus. What's the mode share going to be of red bus? Well, if it has exactly the same characteristics as a blue bus, the logit model would predict that each of the three modes would each get a 33% mode share. However, if it has exactly the same attributes as the blue bus, why would anybody who's not taking the blue bus now suddenly start to take the red bus? Unless there's a capacity problem or some other characteristic changes when you introduce the red bus, 
it should take all of its travelers from the blue bus. And instead of having a 33%, 33%, 33% division of mode shares, we should have 50% of the people are driving, 25% take blue bus, and 25% take red bus. So this is an, a feature, or some might say a bug, with the logit model. It's something to keep in mind. The logit model works very well when you have a confined set of modes, but when you start adding modes, you have to be careful as to where those modes are going to draw their travelers from. So how do we use logit models in travel demand forecasting? So the first thing we need to do is compute the utility for each mode for each origin destination pair. Then we need to exponentiate that, compute the exponentiated utility for each mode for each OD pair. Then we need to sum that utility for all modes for each OD pair. And then we need to compute the probability for each mode for each OD pair to get mode shares. Then we take our mode shares and multiply it by the number of trips in each or for each origin destination pair to get the number of trips by mode for each origin destination pair. So here we have an example. This is an example actually from McFadden's work on BART. You're given it this mode choice model. You have the utility of from I to J by mode M is equal to minus 0.41 cents divided by the wage rate minus 0.0201 times the in-vehicle travel time minus 0.0531 times the out-of-vehicle travel time minus 0.89 times a dummy variable if you're driving minus 1.78 times a dummy variable if you're going to bus with auto access minus 2.15 if you're carpooling now, notice all of the coefficients are negative. So we're really looking at disutility rather than utility here. Travel cost is a disutility. Travel time is a disutility. And in this particular case, the modes that we're looking at, D1, D2, D4, are dummy variables representing driving bus with, bus with auto access D sub 3 and carpooling D sub 4 are all compared to the base mode of bus with walk access and they are all considered, all other things being equal, less desirable. So, travel time, the more travel time, you're less likely to take a particular mode. Now, we also notice that there's a distinction between in-vehicle and out-of-vehicle travel time, and the out-of-vehicle travel time is more onerous than the in-vehicle travel time. The coefficient for C sub OVT is more than twice as large as the coefficient for C sub IVT, and this is typically found meaning that different times are weighted differently. We don't mind so much moving on a transit vehicle or a car, but we do mind waiting for one. So following our procedure, we need to solve for the probabilities for each of the modes. So we're given a set of data describing the attributes for a particular origin destination pair, the travel time for each mode, the dummy variable for that mode if, we're, if we have um, if we're taking that mode. So in the driving column we see the dummy variable is 1 for driving and 0 for the other mo modes. Um, for the walk to bus column the, the dummy variable is 1 for d sub 2 and 0 for the other dummy variables and so on. So first thing we do is we apply the equation and we compute the utilities. Then we take e to that number. So e to the minus 1.26 is 0 0.28. We sum up the exponentiated utilities across all of the modes. So on the right-hand column, we see 0 0.47 is the sum. And then the probability of taking driving is simply the ratio 0 0.28 over 0 0.47. And notice that all of the probabilities sum up to 100% or 1.0. All else being equal, people are most likely on this origin destination pair to, to drive. Almost 60% of the people will drive. 26% of the people will walk to bus, 7.8% will drive to bus, and 5.9% will carpool.